Today I want to talk about 10 things that I learned while leveling in the Burning Crusade. This will include a bit of everything and hopefully there's some tips and tricks in this video that you might enjoy, and maybe there's a couple of things you haven't thought about for the TBC launch itself, and maybe a couple of things are more relevant than you actually thought. Either way, let's get into it. Number 1, dungeon groups are important, and I would recommend you try to set up a group of friends to play with prior to the launch of the Burning Crusade. For example, just go into any Discord server, even hit up people in-game, and get into a Discord server where you can set up who tanks, who heals, and who deals damage, as well as try to find some time during the day where doing dungeons fits everyone's schedule. Since we have things like Discord, it's fairly easy to get one of these groups up and going, and finding people to level with prior to the release of TBC is probably easier than ever. After having leveled to 70 on the TBC beta, I really realized the importance of having groups and having people to play with, because first of all you have dungeon quests, and then there's multiple group quests in every single zone, then you have the Ring of Blood where you want a full 5 man group as well, and getting to level 70 only by questing and never doing any group activity is fairly difficult as there's barely enough quests in total to give you the experience you need, and unless you do literally every quest available, you will most likely end up grinding mobs for some extra experience on the last stretch to level 70. So seriously, try to have a 5 man group ready for group activities, you will make your life so much easier, and you will also enjoy the game itself a lot more as well because you won't have to spend hours to find a pug group. Number 2, Inventory Space. This is and pretty much always has been an issue, especially in the new expansions back in the day where you're constantly picking up new items as well as quest items. So first of all, make sure you clean out your inventory from Classic WoW and deposit any items you don't need on your Outland leveling journey into the bank so you don't so they don't take up unnecessary bank space. Then when it comes to handling your inventory space, keep in mind to utilize your bank tabs as much as possible. So if you ever fly through Shatrath for professions or quests, or whatever really, run to the bank as well and deposit some items. Another trick here is to use the mailing system to send mails to yourself. Literally just create an alt called for example Solheim Mail or Solheim Bank and mail items to that character. Then whenever you need the items back on your main, just log on that alt and click on the return button and it will return the mail to the sender. I should also say that normally mail takes an hour to send, but by using that return function, it will return the mail instantly so you can pretty much return those materials back to your main exactly when you need them instead of having to wait an hour for the mail to arrive. Number 3, you will actually make a lot more gold than you think while leveling in the Burning Crusade, and I actually made 2.5k raw gold without selling any of the auctionable items that I received while leveling. So I basically got 2.5k raw gold from quests and vendor items, and the amount of gold you get while leveling is a little dependent on how you choose to level, and I would think you get less from dungeon grinding than questing. But I actually made a video covering exactly how much gold I made from leveling in TBC in detail, which I'll leave a link to in the description just in case you want to watch it. Number 4, this next tip is a tip I heard about other people using, and I always saw people asking in general chat and guild chat about something called Ghetto Hearth, which is basically returning to your Hearthstone location even when it's on cooldown. This is done by being in a group with someone and entering a dungeon, and then leaving the group while staying inside the dungeon. You will then get a message saying you will be teleported out, and when that timer goes to zero, you will be teleported to your Hearthstone location. This is especially good if you want to use the auction house for example, but you want to keep your Hearthstone in Shatrath for easy navigation, because let's say you are doing a quest in Netherstorm and you pick up an item that you want to put on the auction house ASAP, you can then Hearthstone to Shatrath, take the portal to Stormwind, put it on the auction house, then get a hearth by going into the stockades, and it will return you to Shatrath, even when your Hearthstone is on cooldown. The same principle applies to the Horde as well, as you can use the Ragefire Chasm to do the exact same thing. Or maybe you have your Hearthstone in a questing location and you group up with your friends, 
to do a dungeon and you want to return to that questing location right after the dungeon, you can just do the same thing as well. Number 5, mages are still insane for AoE pulling, even with the AoE damage cap. Mages can farm dungeons such as slave pens and farm upwards of 400,000 experience per hour and go from level 60 to 70 in less than 15 hours, which is actually pretty insane when you think about it. And keep in mind this is just what we've found so far on the beta, and once people get better gear and more people start theory crafting, and we get more spell resist gear, mob pathing and mage, strat mage strategies like this could actually be viable in higher level dungeons and slash or raids as well and this basically means mage boosting might still be the meta in classic TBC. Protection paladins are also really strong for AoE pulls and could also be insane for a potential boosting meta. Number 6, some quests will actually award you with some decent gear upgrades and in some scenarios you will be get pre abyss items from some quests as well. One example here is from the Overlord group quest in Hellfire Peninsula, which requires you to do a quest chain before it, and from that quest you can get a really good trinket. I will leave a link to Scott J's videos in the description, as he talks about these quests in depth. Number 7, once you get to level 70 you will notice that you need a lot of reputation with different outland factions, so you can buy heroic dungeon keys. And this is where once again I will refer you to the first tip I said in the video, which is to have a group of people ready to do dungeons and group quests with, because dungeons will give you a reputation, so by doing dungeons while leveling, you can effectively hit two burns with one stone and farm that reputation while also farming experience. Number 8, speaking of heroic dungeons and attunements, you should definitely start the Karasan attunement questline as soon as possible. Personally, I started this questline at level 69, because you will have to do these quests anyway, and you might as well do them while you get experience from them. For those of you who don't know where to start, simply fly to Deadwind Pass, and speak to the NPC in front of the Karasan entrance, and complete the quests and keep on going from there. After doing those two quests you will be sent to Shatrath, and after that you will have to do Shadow Labyrinth and Steam Vault, and a series of other dungeons. Several guides out there state that you have to be level 70 before starting the attunement, but I was able to start it at level 69. Number 9, if you're playing a hybrid spec you might want to start practicing how to heal or tank, depending on which class you play. After having played both a Feral Druid and Elemental Shaman on the TBC beta, I've noticed how difficult it is to find a random group as a DPS class like that when everyone wants Hunters or Warlocks, or even spell cleave groups. So if you're a feral DPS, learn how to tank, and if you're an elemental shaman, learn how to heal. If you're a retribution paladin, learn how to heal or tank. By doing this you will save yourself a lot of frustration, and you will also save yourself a lot of AFK time. Number 10, if you're playing on a PvP server, prepare yourself for an absolute mess, and you might want to either dungeon grind or actually quest in a group. Also, when stepping through the dark portal and either running towards Hellfire Ramparts or the questing hub, you might want to have some invisibility potions as well as limited invulnerability potions and speed potions on hand to avoid as much combat as possible. Personally, I'm planning on switching from a PvP server to a PvE server so I can level without thinking about world PvP. So yeah, that is pretty much it guys, I tried to include a little bit of everything, so hopefully there's something in here for everyone. But with that being said, if you have played TBC before, there is a high chance you already knew about most of these things. But hopefully it was helpful to new and returning players, and for you TBC veterans, maybe it helped refresh on your knowledge, at least a little bit before the launch itself. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it, and leave a comment down below as well. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for more TBC content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.